Hello, everyone. We're back again. And we're getting back into 1 Samuel. Remember the early part of our teachings? We were in 1 Samuel. We'll be back there again. And we are in 1 Samuel. And we can, we're going to find faith in Saul's son. And what was accomplished by the faith that Paul's son, Jonathan, had. Jonathan attacks the Philistine outpost. Now, this is a topic. This is not the lesson matter in this part of 1 Samuel. We're going to find out what it is. And we can see that Jonathan actually did not attack the outpost. But you go back to 1 Samuel 12, you're going to find out what really happened. So in our introduction, we're going to go through 1 Samuel chapter 12, 13, and till we get to 14, in order to understand the true context of this lesson. You cannot take two or three verses and understand the Word of God. 1 Samuel is an entire book, and in order to understand what is taking place here, you have to understand the preamble, the beginning of 1 Samuel, to understand what this is about. So let us pray, and we're going to do the best we can to get it over to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, again, you brought us back in our studies to 1 Samuel, focusing in on Jonathan, the son of Saul. And focusing in on Jonathan, Father, we see where faith works very dearly in, Saul, in Jonathan for him to accomplish what he accomplished by having faith in you. Father, we, we want us to know that it is you that we must have faith in to accomplish anything. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith means to trust and believe. And Jonathan did both things. And in doing so, we're going to see what occurred with Jonathan's faith, his trust and belief in God. Thank you. The introduction of Jonathan at attacks the Philistine outpost. You know, that was a big battle prior to this outpost. That was something that led up to this outpost. So we got to go back to 1 Samuel 12 in our introduction to bring us to this point where we can see what's really going on here. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 3, Jonathan smote the Philistine garrison and saw his father took credit for it. Jonathan did it. And Saul took credit for it. Saul blew the trumpet. When the victory is done, he was not supposed to blow that trumpet. The victory was. Saul blew the trumpet throughout all Israel, declaring that he had won the victory. That was a bold-faced lie. His son, Johnson, got the victory. Saul was actually in Gideon, Gedal hiding. He was actually hiding. You find it in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 6. The people hid in caves from the Philistines. Now, you're going to see uh, where the Philistines made a comment about you coming out of your cave now. But now you see that they said that because they knew the Israelites, the Israelis had been hiding in caves in fear of the, of the Philistines. But we're going to see now why they said it. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, the true nature of Saul begins to show. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, the true nature of Saul began to show. His son, his eldest son, Jonathan, got the victory at Michmash. That's where the battle was taken place, at Michmash. But Saul blew the trumpet and took credit for it. That's in verse 3 and 4 of chapter 13. You go back to 1 Samuel 12, 12, you see it was Jonathan who won the battle. Saul intrudes into the priest's office. Falsely, back in verses 8 to 10 of chapter 13, Samuel rebukes and rejects Saul. Verse 13 and 14 of chapter 13. And this is all as a result of what Saul did, beginning back in 1 Samuel chapter 12. 
he went into a place that he was not supposed to go, and that was the place of the priest. Israel's disarmament is revealed. Israel had no arms. They had no army by which to defeat the Philistine. That's in verse 19 and 22 of chapter 13. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, Jonathan gained the victory, but Saul takes credit for it. Verses 14 and 15 of chapter 14. The same thing occurred in 1 Samuel chapter 12. Saul took credit for the victory. Modesty is gone from Saul. Modesty is gone from Saul. Saul actually would destroy his son, Jonathan, if Jonathan stood in his way. If Jonathan stood in his way, Saul would have actually destroyed him. Read 1 Samuel chapter 37 to 45. Third verse 37 to 45. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, after the people chose Saul to be, to be, their, to be their king, they began to see and acknowledge their mistake. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 19. Now you remember when Samuel came and talked to the people in 1 Samuel, not to Saul, he said, God has a man that he wants to become king. And the people said, no, we want Saul. We want Saul to be king. And then what occurred, Samuel went back to God and said, God, they rejected me. They rejected me, Lord. He said to Samuel, to Saul, to, uh, yeah, to Samuel, why do you think they rejected you? You are just repeating my words that I told you to say. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And then God said, do one more thing. Go describe to them the type of king that would be over them that they choose. Samuel went back and explained the type of king that they will have over them. They still wanted Saul. And then God said, okay, give them what they want. And Saul became their king. And in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 19, the people began to acknowledge their mistake of choosing Saul to be their king. So these things have to be known when you're looking at the word of God, because it is really deep. In understanding, to understand what God wants us to know. We're going to do the first verse, verse 14, 14 1. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bore his armor, let us go over to the Philistines. Garrison. That's what the army was, the Philistine army was, was sheltering down. That is on the other side. But the Lord, but he didn't tell his father. Now he was not a dis disobedient child, but he did not tell his father what he was going to do. His father was already taking credit for the victory that he had gained. So for some reason or another, he received an unction to go over to the other side, but don't tell his father. And notice this, he had a reason not to tell him because his father would not have concurred with him doing this because of the declaration that his father had already made by being the victor over the Philistines. Let's look at verse 2 and 3. And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gilbeth on a pomegranate tree, which is in the Migrath, and the people there were with him were about 600 men. Paul had 600 men with him. And Ehar, the son of Heza, brothers, the son of Phinea, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest. See, the Lord's priest was there as well. Wearing an ephod, that's a, that's a cloth 
down the one around down the front to show you that your position of status as a priest. And the people knew not that Johnson was gone. Now notice this. These three men that are mentioned here, they didn't tell Saul that his son Jonathan had gone. And if they had knew known he was gone, they knew not where he had gone. Saul had stayed in the farthest part of Gilbert to wait on the pomegranate tree that was about 12 feet tall, which was at Migran. Migran was near Michmash. That's where the battle took place in 1 Samuel 12. Migran was near Michmash on the route of the invading Assyrian army. It was on the route of an invasion army. Saul had about 600 men with him there, nearby. He was not alone. He had about 600 men with him. Now notice the one other thing. It did not say how many men were with Jonathan. It only spoke of two, Jonathan and his armor bearer. It did not speak of any other number of men. The three men mentioned were trusted by Saul. And neither knew that Jonathan had left camp or where he had gone. This had to be a secret. Because if Saul had known what Jonathan was going to do, he would not have allowed, to, allowed him to go. Or something of that nature, because he was already jealous of Jonathan's victories. Let's look at 14.4. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go, open to the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock, and on the other side of the sharp rock, there was a tall rock. And guess what? They had two names. One name was Bozus, and the other name was Shinar. And Shinar. Johnson sought to go over between a narrow passage. Now, during the Six Day War in 67, uh, somewhere back there, the general who was in this war, the Israeli general, took this passage of scripture and saw what Jonathan had done to defeat a large army of men, and he used the same tactic as Jonathan. Way back then, he used it present day and took the victory over the Egyptians. Go back and check this early modern history, and you see that occurring. Johnson sought to go between a narrow passage that only a few men of uh, Vedan army could get. There was a massive rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. It's still there today. The name of one was Boras, meaning shining, and the name of the other was Sina, meaning sharp. Sharp, shining rock. Isn't that something? And that's today. And the same tactic that Johnson used back then was used by Israeli modern army general to defeat the Egyptians in the Six Day War. First Samuel 14, verse 5 and 6. The forefront of one was situated northwest over the, against the Michmash, and the other one southward over against Gibba. And Jonathan said to the young man that bore his armor, and I listen to this now, come and let us go over unto the other side, uh, unto the garrison on the other side. He said he's going to do that. And then it, it, that we may find out what, the, what is the Lord's work. Now, what is going on here? God is, the Lord is testing Jonathan's faith. Jonathan has no idea why. He's going over to the other side. Just he and his arm bearer. He don't know. But he says that I'm going to find out if the Lord is on my side. If he's not on my side, and we're going to see this in this lesson, that surely nothing will come of it. One of the rocks face mix mash. That's where the battle took place in 1 Samuel 12. 
and the other face Gilba. John said to the almond bearer, let us go into the garrison of these uncircumcised men. Uncircumcised men. It may be that the Lord will work for us. Now here's where he's going to express his faith. And he's going to ask on what he's expressing. When we have faith in God, do we act on that faith? Jonathan saw a son along with his arm bearer is acting on the faith that he has in God. Jonathan shows his faith in God. He shows his faith. He believed that the Lord could save them from the Philistine soldiers, regardless of how many there were and how few that was with him. Faith means to trust and believe. And Jonathan believed that no matter how many enemy soldiers there were and how few he had, the Lord would deliver him. He was acting in faith. Saul was a backslidden man and living in fear. But God had another man. Now listen to this class. But God had another man ready for the need. Now that man was Saul's son, Jonathan. You see? Saul was out hiding on the pomegranate tree in another city. But while he was hiding, his son Jonathan was moving on the unction of God to save the nation of Israel. See, God always have a ram in the bush. In this case, a man in the bush. Verse 7 and 8. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Isn't that seven? Turn thee before I am with thee, according to your heart. His bearer said, Whatever your heart states, I'm with you. Then said, Gentlemen, behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. Now, this is showing real faith. Where is your faith in God? Where is our faith in God? These two men are facing an army. And guess what he's doing? He's expressing trust and belief in God's protection. Jonathan armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in thy in your heart. In your heart. Everything begins in the heart. Fear is where stress. And he said, Everything that's within your heart, do it. I am with you according to your heart, not your mouth. According to your heart, Jonathan had with him a man of faith. Jonathan had with him a man of faith. And the man of faith was his own armor bearing, propping him up in the name of the Lord. One willing to give, go with him in any venture. He, he was not afraid to follow Jonathan. Jonathan told his armor bearer that we will make ourselves known to the enemy. Further action would depend on the answer the enemy gives. You know, he said he go, when they get over there, they're going to reveal themselves to the enemy. And what the enemy does will determine the next thing that we do. Verse 9. If they say unto us, tarry, which means wait, Tarry until we come down to you. Now, this is what Jonathan is saying. He said, now, if they say this unto us, he, he made two comments here. One or the other. We will reflect on whether or not God is with us. Then, if they say they're coming to us, then we'll come to you. Now, then we will put, we will stand in our place. That's what he said. And we'll not go into the action of the mountain. John said we won't move if this is what they say. In verse 10, he said, if they will say, come up unto us, then we would go up. For the Lord 
listen to this. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. Two things, Jonathan said, one or the other would happen. One will let us know, don't fight. The other one will let us know whether or not God has delivered them into our hand. If the enemy say to us, wait until we come. Stay where you are. If they say this, we will not fight them. You see? We will not fight them. But if the enemy do not say this, come up to us, then we will go up to them. If the enemy don't tell us to come up, we're going to go up. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand. If the enemy don't do just the opposite, we're going to go up. Because to God, that's a sign that God had delivered them into our hand. Now, this requires a lot of study to understanding. It goes back to first uh, Samuel 12, 13, and all of 14. And this shall be a sign unto us. Now, notice to the church, the signs are for unbelievers. Unbelievers. But Jonathan is a believer. And his sign was for righteousness and understanding and power of God. So don't confuse the two. Signs encourage and strengthen faith in God. But this does not mean that we are not to act without signs in any matter which is definitely made clear in the word of God. If the word of God make it clear that certain things should be done with or without sign, as in his written word, you've got to do it. You don't wait for a sign. A lot of people say, I'm waiting for a sign for God. The sign is already there. It's in the book. Let's, let's pray to see what God wants. He's already let us know what he wants. You, 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 you're messing around because you don't want to do it. If it's not there, it's not there. If it is there, it is there. Move on the word of God. You got to move by faith, not by sight. Verse 11. And both, and both of them, that's, saw, that's uh, Jonathan and Don Barrett, and both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistine. And the Philistine said, Behold, the Hebrews come from out of their holes, where they have been hiding themselves. Now listen to this. Jonathan and his armor bearer revealed, that's what it means when they discovered themselves. They revealed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. They didn't try to hide who they were. They revealed themselves to them where they can see that they were Hebrews. And when they did this, the Philistines started making gestures and slandering and boasting about it. They said, and remember when we went back into 1 Samuel 12, when they feared God, when they feared the, the Philistines, guess what? They, they hid in caves. They're hiding away. This is why they said this. They said they come out of their caves. Because they, they had gone in hidden cave. Now they said they have come out. So you, that's why you get to go back to First Samuel 12 to see why this comment was made by the enemy soldier. There was slanderous, I mean boasting, from a self confident people who were soon to be humbled by two men of faith. By two men of faith. That they came out of holes. Where they had hid themselves. When those who were with Paul, with, with Saul and Gilbar, they were hiding in caves. And these enemy soldiers knew it because they saw them go in. That's why they're saying they're here, coming out of the cave, coming out of the holes. That's why they said this. You had to go back to 1 Samuel 12 and you see this occurring where they're hiding. Even if Jonathan and his armor bearer had been hiding in the hole, they will soon have the last laugh. You know, anybody who's standing for God, you're always going to have the last laugh. Because God never loses. God is always the victor without fail. 14, verse 12. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer, and said, come up to us, 
Notice this. John said, just say, come up. They're going to do something. And we will show you a thing. John said, there's going to be a sign from God when you say, come up. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, come up after me. Follow me up. For the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. Now notice what Jonathan said. He didn't say the Lord had delivered them into my hand. Jonathan was representing a nation. He says he delivered them in the hand of Israel. The men of the garrison told Jonathan and his armor bearer to come up to them and that they would be shown a good thing. In the above verse, Jonathan has said that his to his armor bearer that the Philistine did this. This will be a sign that the Lord had delivered them into his hand. Just the two of them, and not Saul's army. Just the two of them, not Saul's army. Johnson said, John told his armor bearer to follow him, for the Lord had delivered the Philistines into the hand of Israel. Notice this. Not Jonathan, but Israel. Delivered to the hand of Israel. Not Jonathan. See, God was using Jonathan to take Israel out of bondage from the Philistines. But he, but he didn't use the armor of Saul. There were about 30,000 soldiers. In the Philistine army, 30,000. If you go back to 1 Samuel 12, but look, when Jonathan, well, let's, let's look at verse 13. I'm going to tell you what happened here. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hand and upon his foot, or uh, feet, and his arm bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan and his arm bearer. Slew all of them. Now let's look at this. This is verse 13. Johnson climbed up on his hands and on his feet, and his armor bearer followed him. Johnson and his armor bearer slew the entire garrison. Just those two men. In verse 14, tells us that Johnson and his armor bearer, that's in verse 14, it's not in this text. And verse tells us that Jonathan and his armor bearer killed about 20 Indian enemy soldiers that day. That was the number of soldiers in that garrison. Now, these 20 that they slew was going to lead to something else. And now watch what happens here. In verse, this caused a gigantic panic. Just by what they did to this garrison. When the other Palestinian heard this, it caused a gigantic panic in the Philistine camp. That's verse 15. You have to get that in your book. The Philistine only fully retreated. They ran. They ran when they heard this. This happened because one man has faith in God's power and acted on it. Israel army watched them retreat. The army was hiding with Saul. These two men did what they did. It caused a panic in the large army that was surrounding them, and they retreated. And the, and the other ones, they were hiding. Saul took credit for this, though he was nowhere around. And this is why we need to read and study, study and read, and see what God has for us and what he tells us. Amen.